This is a lecture on participatory vendor selection. This lecture was put together by Professor Alemi and narrated by Jonathan Duxbury. In a large organization, group decision making may seem like herding cats. Everyone will have different ideas and concerns. This presentation shows you how to bring a group of decision makers to a consensus regarding selecting a vendor for information systems. Selecting the right vendor is important as a relationship between the institution and the vendor is for long term. Value models help us quantify a person's preferences. By this we mean that value models assign numbers to options so that higher numbers reflect more preferred options. These models assume that the decision makers must select from several options and that the selection should depend on grading the preferences for those options. These characteristics are quantified by examining the various attributes, characteristics, dimensions, or features of these options. For example, if decision makers were choosing among different electronic health record systems, the value of the different EHRs could be scored by examining such attributes as compatibility with legacy systems, potential impact on practice patterns, and cost. First, the impact of each EHR on each attribute would be scored, this is often called single attribute value function. Second, scores would be weighted by the relative importance of each attribute. Third, the scores for all attributes would be aggregated, often by using a weighted sum. Fourth, the EHR with the highest weighted score would be chosen. If each option was described in terms of n attributes, a1, a2, etc., an, the option would be assigned a score on each attribute, VA1, VA2, etc., VAN. The overall value of an option equals value equals function, VA1, VA2, etc., VAN. In words, the overall value of an option is a function of the value of the option on each attribute. Though value models allow us to quantify subjective concepts, the resulting numbers are rough estimates that should not be mistaken for precise measurements. In vendor selection, the numbers used in scoring various vendors should not be the focus of the activity. These scores are intended to offer a consistent method of tracking, comparing, and communicating rough subjective concepts. Vendor selection occurs through a seven-step process. Each of these seven steps are further explained in the following slides. In organizations, there are often many decision makers. No single person's viewpoint is sufficient, and the analyst needs multidisciplinary consensus instead. Obviously, the chief information officer, the chief medical information officer, and the chief nursing officer should all be involved. Clinicians and managers in key information technology committees like Computerized Physician Order Entry Committee should also be involved. Representatives from non-information technology committees like Quality Assurance should be involved. Obviously, people with direct budget authority over the purchase of the new system and those involved in maintaining legacy systems should also be involved. Clinicians who are expected to use a system should be involved. If the same system is being implemented at multiple sites, Individuals across the site should be involved. All of this leads to a very large number of stakeholders, and it's important to engage them all. Before face-to-face -face meeting, group members are individually interviewed and their scoring system is modeled. If group members live far apart, the interviews are done by phone, by a series of emails, or through computer connections. Whether done remotely or face-to-face, -face, the interview is scheduled ahead of time and has the objective of introducing the participant to the tasks, as well as obtaining a set of criteria or attributes that the participant believes is relevant to vendor selection. In addition, the individual interviews are designed to obtain the participant's scoring procedure. The details of how to conduct the individual interviews is provided in a separate but related set of slides. Please consult these slides to better understand what needs to be done in individual interviews. After interviewing each decision maker individually, the analyst collates the responses of all participants and creates a straw model of the group's preferences. 
The face-to-face -face meeting starts with a presentation of the straw model and proceeds with a request for improvements. The procedures for doing so starts with listing each attribute in the straw model and its associated levels in a separate flip chart sheet. All sheets are attached to the wall facing the participants. Group members are asked to sit facing the facilitator and the sheets of flip charts and not each other. Sheets are covered by taping the back to the top until discussion moves to the content of the sheet. The meeting starts with introductions. The project is introduced and all participants are asked to introduce themselves. Then the group facilitator presents the overview of the straw model and opens one of the flip chart sheets to start the revision of the straw model. As comments are made, the facilitator tracks changes to the attribute or the attribute levels in front of the group. The group meeting stops when all attributes have been discussed and revised based on input from the entire group. In this step, the analyst helps the group create a scoring procedure reflecting their preferences. In particular, attribute levels are rated and the relative importance of each attribute is established. To prepare for this task, the analyst lists the questions on separate sheets of paper and asks each participant to respond to the questions individually. For example, if the analyst needs to assess the relative importance of cost per physician and ease of use, then the following two questions are asked. Which is more important, cost per physician or ease of use? If we assign 10 to the least important attribute, how many times more important is the other? The responses are used to assign relative weights to each attribute. Details of how to do so is provided in a separate set of slides.